Welcome to the Modelling Fundamentals on Power Pro Structures. My name is Adam Smith and in this first session we're going to run through the download and installation of your new Power Pro Structures. We're going to kick off by downloading a copy of Power Pro Structures. So head to your internet browser and I'll get you to key in bentley.com which will take us to the Bentley website. Now I'm assuming that you've already got um, a password and so forth from Bentley uh, in this scenario. So we'll go to support, my personal portal in our select services. That will take us to an automatic login. Now you can see that it remembers mine after I've been in for the first time. From here, this is the personal portal for my business, so we've got service requests, existing service requests, license management, the Bentley communities, which is very good, well worth going and have a little look at, and software downloads. Now, there's a couple of ways that we can go around getting through the Bentley downloads. The old Bentley downloads is a little section here called web downloads, so that actually takes us back into the old way that we used to go through and downloads, or alternatively the new system here is within software fulfillment. We can type pro structures and it will come up with the lead sort of uh, download options which we can pick from straight here, or if we're still not quite sure what we're after we have a full list as well. So try going to pro steel you can see here that we've got power pro structures in here under the pro steel section. Okay, uh, this instance here that's select series 7 that I'm choosing. Okay, um, you've, of course you've got all the legal stuff which I would accept and then it would start its download. Um, I've just hit cancel in this instance because you don't really want me to sit down and download a gig of programs, so here's one that I prepared earlier. Um, once the download comes through, we will initiate the executable and what it's going to do is it's going to extract it into a folder on our C drive. So I've just okayed that. From there it will come up and tell us what it's going to install on our computer, in which case we would hit install and just follow the prompts. Just OK everything that it sticks in front of you. You don't want a custom install, you just want a standard install, etc. All very, very simple. OK. In this instance, again, I've already got it installed, so you don't want to watch me do that. So we'll dump that in here. And what it will do is it will give you this icon on the desktop. OK. You can apply that to your taskbar so that it just, um, you've got a little quick start icon. You can see I've got a couple down the bottom here for different versions that I'm running. Okay, um, and that tidies up your desktop a little bit. But in this instance, that's what it will install. So we'll double click on that to start our pro structures. And I'll run you through the setup of the environment. Now, when it first fires up after installation, you won't have anything to open. Okay, so what it'll have is it'll look just like this one here. Uh, it will ask you for a new file to open um, because there is no, it'll assume there is no existing ones. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to select a seed file. Now this may or may not on your system be blank. A seed file is a template by which our ProStructures environment will work in. Where we want to come, okay, is to the Pro Structures folder, which it should default to, okay, but this is the file path here. If you'd like to take it down if you have any trouble, all right, and we want to path it to Australia Seeds, okay, remembering a seed is a template. We only have one, which is all we need, and it has all the settings and line types, etc., that we need, okay. Once it's loaded, it will always prompt you. It will always come up as that one. It will default to that one. 
So in this, um, what in our new file, we're going to call it example one. I'm just going to save it to my desktop so it's nice and easy to find it, and save it there. Now it works a little bit differently. You can see here on the desktop, there it is, ready to open. Okay, it works a little bit different to the way that AutoCAD works. Um, don't worry about your interface or your project or your user. Not at this stage, and we'll just select open. Now, as I was saying. It, you go through a different process than what you would for say AutoCAD. MicroStation wants to save immediately and it will save every keystroke etc after that. So you'll never lose any work with this. Alright, what will come up initially is your RSS feed. This prompts you for when new versions and patches are out, when training for applicable localizations comes out and so forth. So that's very very handy. You can turn that off in the uh, global pro steel settings or options okay we're gonna head straight to license now it's very important that you select here which one you've purchased or which one you're trialing okay this is this is pretty important so if you've only bought pro steel select the pro steel license if you've only selected pro concrete just the pro concrete license if you selected both steel and concrete select pro structures also tick don't show the dialogue at the next start means that you won't be pestered by this all the time I'm selecting pro structures because uh, I'm a channel partner so I, I'm allowed to demo the software the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set the localization for Australia okay you'll see here that my version has an APC that is my custom config yours will not have it but yours will have all these other ones okay so you want to set to Australia this will need a restart at this point okay so we're going to have to um, run off and restart the system just to set that current localization back to Australia so I'll do that right now you can see on the desktop that I've got a new file there from where it's uh, saved the DGN as well so here it is it will default now to open okay uh, and it will default to the last file uh, file used so we won't need a new one we've already got this one Alright, so let's run through a few of our settings and bits and pieces. We'll turn off the RSS. Okay. Now, what we've got over on the left is our tasks. Our tasks, if you want to compare tasks to anything, will be similar to ribbons. Okay? Um, within our pro structures and, and so, sorry, within our pro structures environment, we have a standard set of microstation tools like line measure uh, dimension etc that's all that's all within here okay and it's very important that our element selection is always up okay that is number one these are our standard microstation tasks okay things like a fence is is uh, like a boundary uh, we've got our copy, rotate, mirror, etc. All these standard tools. Okay, get used to where all these are. These is this is the basic microstation interface. Okay, you'll notice that they've also got numbers underneath each one. Okay, if you press that number on the keyboard, up it will come. So I could press number three for modify, and number one would take me straight to copy. Okay it's a very quick way of getting around and it's kind of like a PGP in AutoCAD okay but just a really smart one so get used to what those main microstation tasks are always finish by selecting number one you want that default element up we also have views okay you can see I have three current views up at the moment and you can just toggle them on and off as needed as required okay right through to eight of them so you could have different views set in each one okay in this instance I'm just going to make it really big and set one view down the bottom we have our AccuDraw I'm, I like having my AccuDraw up into my drawing area it's, it's just a personal preference you don't have to and we're going to go through AccuDraw a little bit later 
Now amongst our other tasks and so forth that we've got is we've got several pro structures tasks here. We have our steel tasks. Now these are specific to pro steel and pro steel only. If you have own pro concrete, you'll also have specific pro concrete tasks. And the pro structures ones that are used for both steel and concrete. In particular, things like views and etc. etc. will be common to both. Okay. In addition, we have things like your standard 2D microstation, as well as your standard 3D microstation. So this 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 will do the whole lot for you. Now, as I was saying earlier, we have uh, several views. That we are that we can set up, and each one of those views has its own settings. Okay, so these settings that I'm about to run through are particular for this view, view one only. So I can see here that um, I can have lighting, I can have a background, etc. This is one of my favourite areas: is the presentation mode. So we have standard wireframe, which will kind of look like this. Um, and very easy to see 2D line work. My favorite to model in is transparent modeling. If you're doing concrete illustration, ignore lighting. Okay, if you're doing presentation stuff for others, smooth modeling and smooth shadows and presents beautifully. Okay, so all of these modes, go and have a look. They're fantastic. Okay, in the pro steel environment, I like transparent modeling. Okay. Additionally, in here, in this particular view, I can set the lighting, zooms in and out for this views, preset views, um, rotation, etc., etc. So in here is our preset views, and that is particular for view one. And if we have view two, then it has a, a, a its own set of view tools. All right. Let's get into our basic setup. So we're going to start by going to Preferences, Input, okay. Now the first thing here is we do have a switch here that allows us to use the Escape key like AutoCAD. Personally, I like running it as MicroStation, which is the number one, okay. Additionally, I think by default the Locate Interiors is set to Always. I need you to set it to Never, okay. That's so we can locate the interiors. The look and feel, I personally, now that I know the program, I set my icons to small, they start as medium. Task navigation also has a set as well. Once you're done in there, set OK. And you can see here that um, all the buttons, once you restart the system, all the buttons will go small like mine. But it gives you a little bit more real estate in there. The buttons aren't as big and don't take up as much room. Um, I like having common settings uh, in the drawing environment. So if you right click next to one of the tasks, you can see that I can open it as a toolbox and I can dock it. So I like having common ones like lines and also the uh, one that's got the rectangle on it because I kind of use that a lot. And I also use dimension a lot. So just right click beside it, open it as a toolbox and dock it up the side. Don't worry about dimension because dimension's under number nine. So you just press number nine, number one, and you get the first measure. And you can see here, you know how I was saying before that we've got one, two, three across the top tasks. These guys also have letters beside them. So you could go Q1 and that would be to draw a smart line. It's all very cool. Down the bottom, I like to put some of the common pro structures ones, okay? So I like the, the one that's got Regen on it. So Display Tools and the one with the aeroplane on it. I use those guys all the time, so I don't want to go looking for them. I'm just going to put them in my drawing environment. Additionally, we might like to put the snaps. I like to have my snaps somewhere nice and handy. So you come down here to Toolboxes, so Tools, Toolboxes, scroll down to the S's, and you'll find that you'll have snap mode. 
that's a little toolbox and we can drop it I just drop it right in beside my views there just like that make sure that you've got plenty of room to read the it's not the command line but I, I, I use it for for when it's giving me commands the other thing make sure that the ACS plane and plane snap is not does not have a lock switch beside it I know a few people that have had trouble with that in the past all right so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up things like layers okay so that will pop down here once you switch that layers on or the level display and if you see see you got these little cubes here and they will allow us to dock it so just hover the cursor over one of the cubes and let it go and then pin it and it will just fly in and out and once we start using a few of the levels if you hit used it will sort them all out just by the ones that you've used works really nicely we also want to go to utilities named groups this helps us in our 2d environment once we start doing details okay he'll pop up a little box like a little toolbox like this again exactly the same thing drag it so your cursor goes over the little cube down the bottom and pin it and he'll just fly in and out as we need it all right at this point now if you've made all of these changes you could probably do to uh, restart your environment and that will get us ready to go for our next session which is part two